dog, a procedure that we have been using more and more and more over the past couple of years, which is endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle aspiration. Can you explain to us what exactly EUS and FNA is? What are the indications? How is it performed? And why, why it's different from the other upper endoscopic procedures that we have available? That's a great question, Andreas. So endoscopic ultrasound is a uh, examination in which we can interrogate structures that are close to the gastrointestinal tract. So we're able to look at structures in the chest. We are able to look at structures in the abdomen that are just adjacent to the stomach, duodenum, and esophagus. This requires the use of a specialized endoscope. An endoscope, again, is a tube with a camera on it and a light so that we can actually visually see. What an endoscopic ultrasound allows us to do is to have an ultrasound probe on the end of this device, which then transmits sound waves across the wall of the GI tract into the adjacent structures. And we can see in very great detail what these structures look like. This has been a procedure that's been around for over 20 years now and it has clearly evolved. There are two different devices that we can use. One is a radial echo endoscope and the other is a linear. The physicians who practice this procedure use one or both of those instruments to get a good image of what these structures can look like. We know what normal looks like and we know what disease looks like. So we can tell if there is a disease process in one of these organs that are adjacent to the gastrointestinal tract. Let's say the pancreas uh, specifically. We're able to look at the pancreas through the stomach and through the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. We know what those structures look like in the pancreas. We look at the structures that are adjacent. There are many blood vessels that are there. There are structures called lymph nodes that are there. Uh, and these are adjacent to the pancreas. The pancreas has what we describe as a healthy pattern is what we call a salt and pepper appearance. It's a very unique look when we look at this on uh, ultrasonography. We can see diseases of the pancreas specifically who have different what we call echo texture. So that texture of the pancreas is different. And we can look at the structures within the duct as well. We can look at the blood vessels. There is a uh, tube in the pancreas called the pancreatic duct. This drains the secretions of the pancreas into the small intestine. And we can look at different characteristics and different structures within the pancreas. We can see cysts within the pancreas. We can detect how large these cysts are. We can detect if there are any additional abnormalities within these cysts. We can also detect masses within the pancreas to a very high level of certainty and we can pick up masses that are quite small, smaller than can be detected on other cross-sectional imaging studies. So our resolution, meaning the, the sensitivity of this examination, is very high. We can look at almost the entire pancreas, in, in most cases, in surgically altered uh, uh, patients that may not be uh, true. We may not be able to see parts of, uh, parts of the pancreas that we'd like to see, but in most patients who have not had surgery, we can see the entire pancreas. When there's a question, when there's an issue that arises in what is this abnormality, we can actually then go ahead and take a sample of that. And we have specialized instruments that we can place through this echo endoscope and under direct guidance pinpoint a target to within less than a millimeter certainty so we can then remove a sample and send it off to a lab. With regards to a pancreatic cyst, let's say, these are very, very common. We are seeing many, many more cases than we ever have. It's a mini epidemic yep. of pancreatic cysts. And there's many of these cysts are incidentally found on other cross-sectional imaging studies when we're looking for other diseases. This raises a specter of concern in doctors and patients, because what does this mean? Fortunately, a majority of these cysts are benign. There are very few of them that are pre-malignant and very, very few that are malignant. But it's clear that we need to identify what those cysts are and what they mean to the patient 
and that will help dictate what the follow-up of that patient is. So by getting a sample of the cyst, by using endoscopic ultrasound and fine needle aspiration, we can then predict to a high level of certainty what that cyst is and what type of follow-up is required of that patient. It may mean that they need to come back for frequent cross-sectional imaging studies and maybe even additional endoscopic ultrasounds in the future. Some patients we can say, this is totally benign, we don't need to do any follow-up, but there are other certain patients that we find that there is actually some more serious disease then we need to refer them on to additional healthcare providers. Let's say we come across a, a lesion within the pancreas, a mass lesion. Mm -hmm. So and those are very concerning as well. We can also take a sample from the pancreas, that pancreatic lesion, and obtain samples, send it off to our pathologist, and with a high level of certainty, make a definitive diagnosis about what that is and then what we can do about it. So clearly we have the ability to, with a high level of certainty, make a diagnosis at the time of an endoscopic ultrasound. Other features of the, of the pancreas that we can look at would be, does this patient uh, potentially have changes of chronic pancreatitis, a disease that we see a lot in both of our practices? And with a high level of certainty, we can predict if that is the case. Oh, that's an excellent answer. And, and you know what I always tell patients as well is that I want you to see certain doctors that has a lot of experience, particularly when it comes to chronic pancreatitis, that you have somebody that is doing a lot of these procedures, very well trained, their eyes, their brains are very well trained to recognize certain characteristics because there's always an operator dependent you know, factor. But that's an excellent question, and that's why you know, I tend to send so many of my patients for the endoscopic ultrasound cystic lesions and to give me a sample and provide a sample and give me a very good idea of what may be going on in these patients' findings in the pancreas that are frequently have no symptoms at all and it was an incidental finding. So it creates a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and this is an excellent way to try to get a yes or no or maybe in some cases answers.